and rights and privileges. No man in our city's 76 year history can equal, much less surpass, such brilliant service record. Ladies and gentlemen, to take his oath of office for a seventh term as mayor of Davao City from June 30, 2013 to June 30, 2016, Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Everyone is requested to stand. Kindly sit down. I'm embarrassed to no end. Parek lang yun, yung pako parek, mayor lang ako. <laughs> the Honorable Judge Jill Rose S. Haugen Law, Executive Judge Branch 4, Municipal Trial Court in the cities, will now administer the oath of office of Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Rodrigo Roa Duterte, having been duly elected to the position of Mayor of Davao City, to solemnly swear that you do well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability, duties and functions of my present position and all others that I may rather hold under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will bear true faith. That I'll bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I will obey. That I will obey the laws. The laws. Legal orders. Legal orders. And decrees, and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines of the Republic of the Philippines that I voluntarily impose that I voluntarily impose this obligation this obligation upon myself upon myself without moral reservation without moral reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion so help me God so help me God congratulations for me. Ladies and gentlemen, the message of Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte, City Mayor, Davao City. <laughs> fellow Davaoenos, distinguished guests, fellow workers in government, Friends, ladies, and gentlemen, no leader can achieve much without the support of the people he's sworn to serve. Many things have been said and written about our city, its phenomenal growth, its natural beauty, and its transformation from a crime-ridden community decades ago into a bustling metropolis, oozing with development and potentials. High-rise buildings are changing the skyline of Davao City. Malls are sprouting everywhere. Several years have passed since I took my oath of office for the first of the many times as mayor of the city. And let me say now with deep sense of gratitude. Bye, bye. 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 That whatever gains and awards we amassed would never have been ours 
but not for the support and cooperation that you, the people, gave the city's leadership. Our firecracker ban, anti-smoking, and curfew ordinances would not have created an impact without your cooperation. That is why I always say that the most valuable asset that Davao City has been gifted with is not only its flora and fauna, its fertile fields, its pristine waters, nor its abundant and natural resources, but also its people. Davao City is what is today because of you, because you cared, because you shared. You're one with us in the city government as we traveled every zigzag of every road, every byways, in pursuit of our city's vision, mission, and goals. You were there during the times of calamities, both natural and man-made, to help us without being asked. The gravity of the problems formed by these disasters did not deter us because you were there to lighten the burden, fortify our grit, and strengthen our resolve, and lift our spirit. Today, as I take my oath of office as city mayor for the seventh time, I ask you to join me in sustaining not only the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, but also creating a government for the least, the last, and the lost Philippines. There will be no let up nor fight against all forms of criminality. As a matter of policy, we will intensify our efforts in this campaign. I have said it before, and I will say it again. Criminals have no place in a city except in jails, detention centers, and God forbid, in our funeral parlors. So these criminals decide to fight it out with authorities. <laughs> to the drug pushers, drug dealers, drug suppliers, and perpetrators of heinous crimes, I say again, stop or leave. If you cannot or will not, otherwise you will regret it. Worse still, you may not survive your grief. The clock is ticking away the hours for you. You can live either vertically or horizontally. It is up to you if you fight the day ends permanently for you. For the children in conflict with the law who have made bloody fights and bloody riots nightly occurrences, do not waste away your lives. The provisions of the Juvenile Justice and the Welfare Act of 26, 26, behind which you seek refuge to exempt yourself from accountability for committing an act which ordinarily is a crime if committed by an adult is undergoing amendment. Do not wait for that to happen. Mend your ways. It will be for your own and your families. Good. Everyone knows the frequent floodings in low-lying areas that have been experiencing, we are experiencing of late, is due to climate change. Everyone knows that. But we cannot fight much less prevail over nature. Indeed, no one can. But secondly, we shall take deliberate action to improve the flow and the holding capacities of our waterways and drainage systems. 
the Clarion Canals will be made a regular feature of the department charged with this responsibility. We will acquire more much needed rescue and weather monitoring equipment, more machines and machineries, and more communications facilities in order to save lives and preserve properties whenever and wherever calamities strike. We will continue to conduct barangay-based information campaigns, educational programs, and disaster management trainings to prepare everyone for any eventuality that puts lives and properties at risk. We will put additional stress in the management of solid wastes because improper waste disposal causes drainage problem, in turn contributes flooding and consequently wrecks evoke to the economy and results in health problems. We have acquired relocation sites to accommodate those who live in danger zones where the impact of flash floods is most severe. To those residing in these area zones, you have to leave the place. There is no other option. However, relocation will be allowed only when the sites are developed and ready for habitation. At the same time, we will encourage investors to put their businesses and projects where these relocation sites are, spreading out industries and commercial concerns to sleepy areas as for development is an option that we will pursue. Places of residence and places of work must be near as possible to each other to caution the impact and mitigate the inconveniences of relocation. We will continue to protect our environment and preserve our watersheds without obstructing the march of progress. The recent passage of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance of Davao City, where our watersheds have been classified as protected areas is most welcome development. Environment protection and development must complement and not clash with each other. To the private sector, let me say this. We expect you to continue to spare the business and economic activities of, in the city. The city government is your partner and not your competitor in this endeavor. Within the limits of the city's resources, we will fast track the development of infrastructure in production areas and intensify our efforts to promote the city as a tourist destination. We are dead set in stopping corruption in the city government. Along this line, we have requested the Ombudsman to appoint the city's resident Ombudsman soonest to investigate complaints and cases of corruption in the city. Do not test the determination and will of the city to institute reform. Ignore this warning and you will be so. Finally, we call on everyone to join us in creating a city where opportunities abound, where every house is secured, every person safe, and every place a home for everyone. This is our home. Yours, mine, ours. Thank you. Good day.